The thing is, is that every month, we want to make sure that on the 22nd, GitLab is actually faster, that GitLab is actually more capable, that there's more features, and it's more powerful, independent of how you're using GitLab. Doing that, as I was saying, it's, it's, it's not always easy, but uh, this is how I think we do it. We have, of course, a strong vision for GitLab. We use very strong iteration, and then we have the contributions of the community. So I'm going to walk through all of those things and tell you a little bit about how they work. So the vision of GitLab is what you were just seeing. We want you to go faster from ID to production. It has to be insanely easy to do all these things. But if you're using 30 tools nowadays, it's really hard. You come in new to a company, and you set up these 30 tools, you first have to get access to all of them. You, you will discover that, you know, three weeks in, you don't have access to this particular CI tool for this particular stage. And that has to be easier. So everything that we do has to fit within this whole idea. And then what we do is we iterate, we iterate. And we set a few principles of iteration, but maybe I should just call this conversational development because that's what it really is, to build a better product every single month. And the most important one of that is the minimally viable change. Whenever you have an idea, like slash comments and chat or something else, what we do is we look for the minimal possible way to actually ship this. How can we reduce this feature to its very essence you might, you might have used uh, issue boards. And issue boards compete with other products like Trello. So issue boards still does a whole lot of things not that Trello does really, really well. Why is that? Because we chose to ship the very simplest version of this feature, of this change in GitLab so that then what happens is that we ship it and now we get a lot of feedback from everybody. Everyone is like, oh, you should be able to do this, you should be able to do that. And by making it so simple, by bringing it back to its minimally viable change, we were able to ship it and also decide what to do next, rather than just going on a hunch, spending six months, and then discovering, well, people don't really care about what color the cards are, they care about being able to sort them, which currently you cannot do, but soon. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, small, shipping small things doesn't imply you have to do simple things, or you know, things that everyone else is doing. You can, you can be really ambitious. How many, raise your hand if you ever ran, across, ran against a verge conflict. How shitty is that, right? <laughs> so we, we all thought it was really shitty. Um, and GitLab started with just a bunch of engineers. And then our chief of marketing said to us, hey, I'm having a merge conflict and this is a pain. I had to learn how to use the terminal. I had to set up my default editor so I could then try to fix my merge conflict. We were like, well, why don't we do put the thing to fix this in GitLab? So we did. And we shipped a very minimal version. You could just choose, is it our change or their change? But you can now serve, uh, solve merge conflicts in GitLab. Be ambitious. And this one comes from the Rails community, where you say convention over configuration. This one is really important. Let's say that I want to introduce a new change that is interesting for particular people. The knee-jerk response of anyone thinking about the change is to say, hey, uh, we just make it an option. You configure it here and here, so that you know other people don't run into it. But with every change that we make to GitLab, we add to the complexity of the, of the product. We add to everything in terms of complexity. Because not only do we have to test GitLab now as we were already testing it, we now have to test it to both cases, the feature on and the feature off. So we always try to reduce the amount of configuration and make features in such a way so simple that there's no configuration needed. And it's just smart or just easy to use. Of course, that said, it's not always possible. And sometimes we have configurations. And lastly, we want to respect the flow of the application. If you do something very simple in GitLab, it has to stay simple, independent of the changes that we add. We added an issue board, but it's not in your way. We added some new features here and there, but they are not in your way. Creating a merge request should only be easier over time. It should not be harder. So those are the four principles. But the most important thing is that we have this amazing community that every single month adds all these interesting changes. They, you know, the, People like you solve bugs, make GitLab faster, add whole new features. 
And that's very powerful. We're, I mean, you don't have to worry. We're never going to change. We're not, ne never going to be fully closed source or anything because this is just great. And especially you are all here today and we asked you all to you know, submit your project. And it's very important to us to have contributions to the ecosystem, not directly necessarily to GitLab. Uh, and I wanted to highlight one, one of the submissions to the Amplify Your Code thing. Uh, I thought it was really nice. It's a, it's a little library, it's, high, uh, it, 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 it's, it's on GitLab.com. And you can automatically publish to NPM straight from your GitLab repository by uh, Hudson Betts. I don't know if Hudson is here today. I don't see any hands, but um, it's these kind of things that uh, really help us shipping a better product every month. And it really motivate us to keep going. So in short, and I'm going to keep it short because I know you're all standing here today. Um, having a strong vision, working in this iterative way, and then having this amazing community that contributes things, uh, I, I think that results in awesomeness. All right, so uh, now there's some interesting stuff. When, what are we shipping? This Saturday is the 22nd, I think, I'm pretty sure. Um, we're going to ship some cool stuff. We're adding multiple issue boards so that now you can actually have multiple boards in GitLab. So rather than having one per project, you can create multiple. Uh, they're smart, so if you make one change on the board, it will propagate to the other boards automatically because it's based on labels. And we made some minor improvements. You still can sort. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but you can actually add an issue now. <laughs> That's the response that I uh, uh, This is it, yeah, multiple boards. And, and this is actually an old screenshot because there will be a little button here to add a new one. Some of the stuff you were seeing that Sid was just demoing will actually be shipping. So you can deploy GitLab with a single click uh, to OpenShift. The review apps were already in GitLab, so you could already have these awesome environments created. When you create a merge request, you just have to search for it. We'll make them a little bit better. And a few more changes. The terminal, it's not yet in GitLab, but give it a month. We improved psychoanalytics, so it's actually useful. Uh, I know there was a question about this. Right now, you don't get data immediately, and now we'll make sure that they, you, the data immediately appears as you do stuff. What, we're adding group labels so that it's easier to manage labels in GitLab uh, across the group. And uh, I think this is the most exciting uh, change besides all the cool ID to production stuff. Is uh, now there's a full merge conflict editor. So any kind of conflict you can now solve in GitLab and you can just edit it there and then uh, you can uh, commit it. 